Hello and welcome to Muiying, the podcast. Today we have Helen Tran on the show to talk about Buddhism and spirituality in Muay Thai. Helen is an Australian photographer that's been living in Phuket, Thailand for the last few years. She shot dozens of Muay Thai fights ringside and is a key member at Revolution Muay Thai in Phuket. Welcome to Muiying, Helen. Thanks for coming on to chat. Uh, how has your week in Muay Thai been? Ah, oh, hi, Angela. Thanks for having me on. Um, it's been a busy week for me, but uh, everything is going well. The weather's getting really nice now. So, yeah, happy to see things moving in Muay mm -hmm. Thai. Yeah. So, Helen, uh, me and you, we've been friends for several years now. Uh, could you just give a very brief overview of uh, your journey into the sport of Muay Thai and how you found yourself to be uh not a fighter on that side of the lens but the photographer on the other side of the camera um well for me i've always been a photographer i mean i've been a photographer for over i think it's over 12 years now so i started muay thai my muay thai journey very late and um so you know i tend to photograph the things that i'm interested in so once i got into muay thai and committed to it as um as a sport, as something that I really loved and enjoyed doing, I started photographing it as well. And um, so I started that doing that in Sydney, and that's where I'm originally from. And yeah, basically, I photographed and I didn't want to become a fighter because I knew, well, firstly, because I started Muay Thai late, and, um, you know, I started also later on in my journey i managed a muay thai gym so i know what it takes the effort that uh fighters do and you know what they um sacrifice or um basically how they commit to their journey as a fighter and i knew that really wasn't for me but i enjoyed the sport immensely and i enjoy technique and all that so that like photographing a really helps me understand understand Muay Thai as well actually because you know I'm always there looking at looking at fighters and what their technique is like and um you know just trying to get the right moment so yeah I was able to merge my two loves into one uh I always say like fighting is not for everyone but when it comes to Muay Thai like there's something in Muay Thai for everyone um, so I think it's it's great that you were able to find that overlap that um, one was made you happy and two was more you. Um, what interesting things do you see as an observer? Um, well, I had this pro I was working on this project, which um, uh, I, I'm still kind of working on, but more on the completion side of it. Um, and it, what I noticed was that there was a disparity between uh, female fighters and male fighters in Thailand. So uh, I based my project on that. So that's one of the things that I was able to observe in photographing Muay Thai, you know. Um, I saw that a lot of uh, male fighters had more attention than the female fighters and they struggled to get a lot of fights as well. Um, so basically I wanted to tell their stories through my photos. And that's what I set out to do. And I think I worked on that for about one and a half years, I think it was. And um, yeah, it's been really interesting. And, you know, uh, being able to go to the stadiums and all that has been oh, an amazing experience. Like to see real Muay Thai, you know, like everything is Muay Thai, but then to witness it, at the stadium in Thailand, you know, with the gamblers um, and the crowd and just that energy there. It's just really something that that's amazing to see and to feel and to be a part of, actually. It's super cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely a very intense feeling being in those stadiums. Like you, you feel yeah. everyone's energy, you feel their excitement, you feel their nervousness, you feel like the wins and the losses. And even if you don't know the person, you all those emotions come out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, if it's actually going moving forward, 
um, uh, I wonder whether it's going to be like that again, actually. So just something interesting that we're going to like watch this space and see how it, it develops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Helen, you're a religious person and also very spiritual. Uh, those two aspects are similar, but still different. And people sometimes get them mixed up. What do you think the differences are between religion and spirituality and where do they overlap? Uh, I, I, I don't know whether I'm actually like a religious person rather. Like, you know, I'm Buddhist and um, my parents were Buddhist. So it was something that I uh, was born into. But, you know, my family never really uh, did much about it. Like, you know, other than the traditions that, like, you you kind of do, like, if someone had to go to church and they'd go to church, but they're not really understanding something. So, you know, sometimes for, for New Year's or for these occasions, we'd go to the temple or we set up an altar and um, do our thing. But... I didn't really get into it until much later and I I won't I can't say that I'm actually a religious person but um there are some practices that I do and I would say I'm more of a spiritual person because I think you know it's just the path that I I live by rather than um I'm not sure, like I, I'd say that religion and spirituality is very much similar to each other though, but there's such a, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, I wouldn't say it's taboo, but um, there's just such a name associated to say that you're a religious person these days, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like a stigma mm -hmm. or, I, I, I don't know actually. I think I think uh, people they tend to think of extremists. That's probably yeah, why. yeah, yeah. But yeah, but um, obviously there are extremists in every religion, every following of any sort. Um, but when when I when I met like religious person, it just meant like someone who practices the religion and uh, it and tries to learn more about it. Uh, that's mm. all I meant. Like, I don't mean oh, any yeah. form of like, yeah, like, because I think we, we think of the extremists and every religious thing. And then we, that's why I think that's part of why, like, there's such a taboo of, uh, around like calling yourself religious or calling someone else religious. Mm. Um, so I myself, I grew up also from a Buddhist family. My parents are Buddhist. They were raised Buddhist uh, from the countries that they were from and within their families. And similar to what you said, like growing up, I didn't know anything. I, I mean, I didn't know much about Buddhism. I just went to the temple whenever it was like Lunar New Year or whenever my mom was like, oh, we're going to go to the temple today. But, you know, my parents, they're not very like spiritual or religious. So I grew up not really knowing much about it. And I actually learned like a little bit in school about it. And I was like, oh, this is what it stands for. Like I can kind of get into this, but it kind of just like stopped whatever I learned in school, which isn't much. So how did you get from a similar point as me to where you are now, where you have, uh, where it's taken such a big part of your life and you try to live by a lot of the principles? Um, I think it's because I had questions. Like, I mean, not questions as in who is God, but um, I struggled with, um, I think in the past I had struggled like with a sense of what was going on, where I was in the world, you know, and, um, and I was always very like, my emotions were always up and down. So how I got into Buddhism was like partly, or well, spirituality anyway, uh, was through you know, because of all dealing with my emotions and all that um, and not really understanding where I was in the world, like, or my place. Um, I got into it by, like, through meditation and, you know, just I was lucky enough to um, 
when you when you start going on your path right sometimes like a teacher would appear um you know and there are lessons along the way like you would meet people um who who kind of like steer you in the right direction i was lucky enough to have that so um so i think in my questions like it was easy because i was born like my parents were buddhist and i was born buddhist it was easy for me to just start to learn more about it so i started reading um and just finding out more about like what buddhism was and what it stood for basically and you know once i started looking into it it was like okay so it's not really a religion per se but it was more like you know because buddha himself was like yeah you know you've got these things that you can follow um but hey just try it out you know you can make mistakes it's okay so i, I liked mm -hmm. that you know and it was like okay it's not like saying do this do that it's like just see how it goes and, and yeah, even with my very limited understanding and knowledge of Buddhism, I always saw it as more of a philosophy than a yeah. religion. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Like, I mean, it really is more of a philosophy. Like once you start reading it, uh, reading more about it, there's a lot of things like basically that, you know, has to do with philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why that's what got me interested in it as well because I like philosophy I like discussing things about the world yeah and just thinking about things introspection and things like that yeah right? definitely um so upon your research uh did you learn that there are different types of Buddhism because from what I know there are two like broad schools of it and there's this one school that you see in most Eastern Asian countries such as uh, Taiwan, uh, parts of Japan, and there's another school of it that you see in Southeast Asia, such as Thailand. Mm. Yeah, um, I, you know, there there are a few differences. Like in Japan, I think there's um, uh, there's there's different names for it, which I can't really recall right now. There's no, I can't recall it, but there are different names. So, um, like, for example, where I grew up, I mean, not where I grew up, but where my parents grew up in Vietnam, like um, Buddhism over there is actually different to Buddhism in Thailand. And it's really interesting because, um, you know, now that I live, I've been living in Thailand, I've been learning a little bit more about it. And it's just different because, um buddhism has always been like linked like it started off with um hindu hinduism like with the roots from there of course um and so what you notice in in thailand and in cambodia like you know even the buildings themselves are very like similar to hinduism and um you know it's just so very complex because there's all these these deities as well that that you would only see more in in Thailand or Cambodia or and maybe Laos as well and then it's different from like Buddhism in Vietnam like the deities that you see there and yeah one of the uh, things that I noticed when I first moved over to Thailand was the deities I was like hmm isn't like the elephant god isn't that part of buddhism like i mean sorry isn't that part of hinduism like why is it here in a sakyat which is very viewed very as very uh buddhist yeah um yeah because buddhism in in thailand um is linked to animism as well and this is uh all the well it's linked to animism buddhism and hinduism and um and it's just like over the years you know the culture has just merged and everything's just come together and then now they call it 
um, Buddhism because like, you know, the monks, they, they do the sakyans and technically actually, if you, you know, um, there's some parts in Buddhism where it's like, where, when I, when I started to learn about it, I was like, well, I thought, you know, cause sakyans are like, a, it's like a magical thing. Um, that's the belief, you know, that it's got protective stuff. And, um, when I was learning about it, I was like thinking, I thought magic was really not something that the Buddha himself like believed in. Like he said, because I think he said, um, don't, you know, concentrate on that. So, um, you know, just live life sort of simply. And, um, so, so then I was like, well, why is the, why are, are they doing sakyans and all that, you know? And then, and then I realized that, okay, well, that's part of like animism, which is, um, before Buddhism, that's, it's kind of like a base, base, uh, sort of religion that they used to do, uh, which is more, um, uh, respecting the gods having different gods and all that and spirits basically like that. So yeah, the Satyans uh, has come in to Thai, but um, yeah, it's a little bit different. And then, and then somehow along the way, like now it's seen as like a Muay Thai thing, even though it's not. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like er everyone that does Muay Thai, they think, oh, Satyans, but it's like it's actually for everyone, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not only for people that do Muay Thai. It's it's not a Muay Thai only uh, tattoo. It's just yeah. It's you know really because it's for fighters because they want protection and good luck. So that's why they go and do it. But any other like even policemen, um, any other sort of like person, if they want something a protection or, you know, good luck in something that would get a fucking up. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah. the biggest takeaway from all that is that, uh, there's different kinds of Buddhism and then like Buddhism in Thailand and a couple other countries in the area, they're different in an, in and of itself. Like it's, it's a, it seems like it's a big combination of different cultures and a little, and then like different beliefs too, that kind of Ha it's made its own ecosystem in a way yeah definitely i think i saw like a um there was a, a youtube video somewhere i can't remember what it was so i can't link you to it but it, it was just a little clip where um there was a guide and he was taking these people um to one of these temples and i think it was probably it was either thailand or um, somewhere in cambodia and um there was in the temple, there was a picture of, you know, like, uh, within the temple, uh, the, the building structure and how they have the carvings. There was a carving of maybe, um, one of the deities. I can't remember who it was. And then, so the, the people were like, they pointed to the deity and that was like, do you know who that is? And then the tour guide was like, oh, it's Buddha. It wasn't, <laughs> you know? uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if you can find a video, I could put it in the show notes if people are interested in looking at that. I mean, not that it's like, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just proving like one of your points or just showing a point you're trying to make. It's not like extremely important in the grand scheme of mm -hmm. things though, right? Uh, if I can find what it, are, I'll let you know. It, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, what are some miscons, like we, we talked about some misconceptions in Buddhism in Buddhism and also Buddhism in Thailand. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any other misconceptions that you see people kind of walking around and just saying, or do you, do you have any that you realize during your time towards the spiritual spirituality level that you have now? Mm, can you elaborate on that? What like, I mean? so one of the misconceptions on uh, Buddhism specifically in Thailand is that like, um, Sakyans are Buddhist, but there's actually more and more layers to it, as you just explained. Are there any other misconceptions about Buddhism in Thailand that you've noticed or that you've learned? Uh, 
No, I, no, I don't think so. Not that I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's more like just within, like I mean, the main difference, different things that like that that's different from other cultures. Like I mean, other Buddhist um, areas is what makes Thailand just so different. You know, with like you know because they have Sakyans, but then actually in Cambodia they have it as well, and that's probably where it started from. And people mm-hmm. can argue. People will argue about it. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not a historian, so I, I can't say where it came from. But um, that's that's just the main difference that I noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We talked, uh, you know, we talked about Sakyans and you explained the significance of it and it's linked to Buddhism and spirituality. Uh, how about we take some other items that we see in Muay Thai and maybe you can give your two cents on them. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so when fighters go into the ring, they wear a monkon, which is the, the headband looking thing. And they also wear yep. their prajiats, which is the armbands. Like, can you elaborate on why fighters do that, especially the Buddhist ones? Um, okay, so this goes back to history of like, um, you know, the fighters uh, who were in the past, they were more like warriors. And before they go to fight, they would wear a piece of their mother's um, clothing as a good luck thing. And those, the good luck thing is usually blessed. So that's, I believe that's why they have the Prajyats and the Monkon. And, um, you know, now Muay Thai is basically, you know, a fighting sport rather than like a combat like warriors. Uh, it's that tradition has just come, you know, uh, filtered down. Um, so basically it's just for luck and a protection mm-hmm. for them for before their fight. And, um, you know, when you walk into the ring and you feel in the ring, that's like paying respect to um, to your gym and paying respect to your teachers, most importantly. And the, your teachers is basically um, your trainer. But, you know, in saying your teachers, it's also like it's, it's your Ajahn. And when, when you say Ajahn in, in Thailand, it's like uh, it's, it's like teacher, but with a lot of respect, do you think? Like um, when you call someone Ajahn in, in Thailand, it doesn't mean just teacher. It's like you, there's a lot of respect to that. Um, so that's, that's what it is. And when you're sealing the ring, it's like you're going to all the corners like um, of the compass to, um, to basically to... Uh, put your energy within and just for good luck like everything is like it's really funny because when I when I speak to my Ajahn like um uh who who does my Sakyan he's I was like what does this mean you know what's this what's what's this mean and he's like oh good luck everything's good luck (laughs) (laughs) But, but, but they're all different like they're all different like Sakyant styles, but at the end of the day, really, it is pretty much good luck. <laughs> well, everyone yeah. wants some fortune in their lives, you know, yeah. life is unpredictable, so why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, something else I've heard about sealing the ring, too, is also how it seals off the ring from evil. What do you think about that statement? Yeah, I would say that. Um, I would say that that would be true because, like, you're walking around, right, and you're um, basically putting your energy throughout and your, you know, if you notice like TIE fighters, like, you know, they're touching the ring. So yeah, that's, that's a sacred space. Basically the ring is the sacred space for you to fight in. So what, what is considered evil? Like what are these things that they don't want entering the ring? 
That I I don't know. I can only speculate um, because you know there's outside influences that can happen. Like uh, you got to think about like the succulents. If they're a magical magical um, tattoo, or no, let's not talk about a tattoo. Like succulents are basically because you can do succulents in um, as a tattoo and you can do it as like on the, the pieces of cloth. And, you know, that's, that's originally how it started with the, the cloths and all that. And then now they just put it on the bodies. Um, so I guess sealing in sealing the ring and all that, like, you know, you don't want any external influences to come in to, um, to, challenge you or challenge a person when they're fighting mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. so then back to like the the what you said about a lot of things being for good luck is there any concern do you think uh of other people wishing you bad luck would that be what do you think that's something that crosses someone's mind when they're oh yeah them? i mean okay so when you think about like um okay with muay thai uh, sometimes you see like people, people, uh, yeah, sometimes you see people with, um, you know, these charms and all that. And that like those charms are also like their lucky charms and all that, but they're, they're blessed, blessed um, items as well, similar to succulents. And, you know, they wear them as pendants and, um, so yeah, I mean, if I've I've seen in some fights where like if a fighter wins his fight, um, they'll be gifted with one of these like amazing, amazing uh, pendants for good luck. So you can say that the opposite thing would happen, like because these guys are like gambling as well, you know. So um, so the gamblers like really believe in that in these like items, and so. If they believe in good luck, then of course, like um, someone would also wish someone ill feelings or some bad luck to happen so that they personally could win the fight and win their money. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, of course. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked about a lot about like sealing a ring, which is part of the white crew. And mm -hmm. uh, white crew in Thai, it literally means respecting your teacher. Like, why mm -hmm. is the, the motion of putting your hands together and kind of like putting your head down a little bit? And in Thailand, it's used as a, a greeting. Also in other countries in the area, it's used mm -hmm. as a greeting and also as like a sign of respect. Um, there are differences in the why and uh, the lower the level in the why, the the less respect level you're giving the person you're wanting mm -hmm. to and the higher the why goes up on the head the more respect you're, it's going to. Do you see any links to this with the Buddhism that they have in Thailand? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I When I first came to Thailand, I was like, I was worrying like this at first. And then one of my trainers actually told me, he was like, no, you don't do that to people because that's for Buddha. Because, you know, it's at the top of your mm. head. He mm -hmm. goes, you would only do that like at the temple and all that. Because you don't do it to your teachers, so like maybe with your teachers, it's just a little bit lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was really and interesting. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that is definitely interesting. Uh, something else I heard uh was was that uh, oh women also don't lie with their hands up that high that was something else i heard as well uh there was a thai trainer who was like oh no no you lady you don't lie like that only men lie like that oh. and i didn't i mean me, me being like uh new to the sport like i saw men why pretty high to their ajans or other ajans at the gym and and then when i i like try to learn by watching mm -hmm. so then when i did the same there a lot of them were like no 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 uh you don't do that you just do it like ah, this a little bit lower interesting. Uh, yeah i mean i'm not really sh i i i don't know if that's like a uh buddhism thing or if it's more of a cultural thing or maybe a bit of both um but it was just also something else that i wanted to the point out in a way um mm -hmm. so so then there's a lot of things in thailand and Thai Buddhism about like 
levels, right? Uh, like the why being one of them, like the higher you are on something, the the more, uh, what, what would be a good term? Like the more respect it's given. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also given to the Moncon. Like one of the rules of the Moncon is that it cannot touch the floor. Mm. What is the, what, why do you, what is the significance of the floor or the lack of significance of the floor? Like, why can't something that's blessed be on the floor? Well, because it's basically to do with the levels. Anything that's uh, on the floor is like considered as dirty, you know? Mm -hmm. So obviously a blessed item, it has to be like at the top you can never put it on the ground because that's disrespecting it you know mm -hmm. um also in in well even not just thai buddhism but even like but more so actually uh with in with thai buddhism actually because uh thais they say that the feet is dirty so that's the lowest part and you and when you go to a temple, you never point your feet towards Buddha, never. So mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, this is the same in in uh, like other countries as well. But it's more like they it's more noted in Thailand. That's what I've I've noticed, and mm -hmm. and they make it a point. You know, you you just never point your feet towards like uh, Buddha yeah so in with the mong kong it's the same thing because you're putting that on your head you know so that's why i must never like touch the ground because it's such a blessed item so where do people uh, usually put their mong kongs yeah uh when you go to fights and all that i love this is what like one of the things that i really love to see because it's like you know there's so much respect for this this Hong Kong, you know, they always put it at the top somewhere. They'll find like an area where they can put it up, and then you'll you'll see like Hong Kongs like around, um, you know, hung up somewhere. And I think that's a really nice. I think it's nice tradition. Like it's it's not just a tradition, but I mean it's 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 something that's uniquely um, Thai and also like for Muay Thai, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I see someone like putting them Hong Kong on the ground, I, even I'm like, hey, you, you, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be, you know, putting it at the top. But even uh, I know that some some people like they say that like the women can't really touch the Hong Kongs as well. Some Hong Kongs you shouldn't be shouldn't be touched because I remember once I think I accidentally reached to grab one and they were like, no, 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 you know, don't. Because you're a woman, mm -hmm. like okay. We're get, we're definitely gonna touch upon the the differences of like what women can can or cannot do in like the realm of Buddhism mm -hmm. in Thailand and how it relates to Muay Thai. Um, I uh, but back to the Mongkon thing is like uh, I've even heard like at some points it's like you know a lot of Mong Kongs are blessed by a monk and I've even heard some people saying like oh once it touches the floor the good luck is gone. And I do think it's interesting, like uh, like you said, just when you go to the fights and stuff, uh, people carry it around like like it's more valuable than anything they have on them at the moment. More valuable than money, more valuable than their phone. They're just if if they have no place to put it, it's on someone's shoulder. They're not just gonna mm. leave it on a table somewhere where it can accidentally be lost or accidentally fall to the floor. Like people take such good care of the Moncons and then they make sure that it has a place to go as soon as yeah. they get to wherever they as soon as they get to the stadium or the venue. So it's it's definitely like very interesting to note, like as as um as someone who's been in thailand same as you like there are people who are don't seem like spiritual or religious and then as soon as they get to the fights that part of them is turned on in a way yeah yeah it's it's really it's kind of so cute like <laughs> it's, it's nice it's something nice to see especially see like a big trainer and he's just like <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah Let's go back to uh, what women can and cannot do in Muay Thai and 
in relation to like Buddhism. So mm -hmm. one of the things is women going under the bottom rope of the ring, like because we talked so much about levels and how the lower the level, the less respect you're given, the higher the level, the more respect you're given. Uh, like women going under the most bottom rope in the ring and not in Thailand, women, they don't really, they don't have the option. They're forced to go under the bottom rope. And if any woman tries to go between the ropes or over the top rope, they get a lot of flack from it, from just the people like the Thai people that are uh, there to watch uh, the gamblers and everything like that. Because I've always gone under the ropes in Thailand. Not, I just never questioned it because uh, for me, it was like, all right, I something feels off about this. And maybe I don't agree with men going one way and women being forced to go another way. Um, but also, I'm here to fight and it's not something I'm going to put too much energy towards. And I remember there is this one time when uh, a trainer just kind of temporarily forgot in like the craziness of a fight. I finished the fight. The decision was made and I was about to exit the ring and then the trainer like automatically pushed down the top rope as he would for like any of his other fighters who are not women and then all of a sudden everyone in the crowd was like hey 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 pooing pooing which means a uh, woman in thai yeah and then they were like no 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 she can't go over it. and he and he he was so embarrassed and he had to he was like apologizing he was like oh i'm sorry i just forgot and then uh he had to lift up the bottom rope so i could roll out from under mm -hmm. it um and this thing, it kind of rubs a lot of, especially Westerners, the wrong way. Yeah. Um, a lot of Westerners are like, well, why am I going under the bottom rope? Why am I seen as beneath men? Why am I seen as subpar to men? So uh, what are what what is the reason why women have to go under the ropes in a um, Muay Thai ring? Uh, that one, I, I don't really know that much. Like, I mean... That's more of a tradition with Muay Thai, I would say. Like, um, it's mm -hmm. more of a Thai tradition. Um, probably the real reason, like, is it's just lost, like, along the way. Unless, um, yeah, I, I have asked. I have asked some old trainers as well, like the, you know, the ones who've been around for a while, and they just, uh, they never really gave me an answer that I thought was, you know, whether it was logical or whether it made any sense. Like, I don't think mm -hmm. they really knew themselves. So I, it was, It's just like an accepted yeah. uh, thing. Okay. And yeah. what about women not being able to touch certain rings? So then up until very, very recently, uh, Mumpini, they didn't mm -hmm. allow women to touch the ring. Forget about fighting on it, like touch it with their hand yeah. or accidentally brush up against it. Um, and there are some stadiums that are still, still like that. Um, what? Why was that? Uh, that one is like I believe that it's because um, the ring is like a it's treated as a sacred, sacred object almost, and it. It's, this is actually linked back to um, Hinduism, kind of, uh, where so um, in Hinduism, like if a woman has a period, she can't go uh, into a temple. So it's basically like that. That's what I believe. Um, that's why they can't touch the ring. But then in like in Thailand, they would say that it's because it's bad luck whenever if a woman touches a ring um you know like especially at Lumpani before if a woman had there was one woman that had touched the ring and that time I think uh all the fighters suffered like bloody cuts uh all the fights were really violent and all that so then they were like okay it's bad luck for a woman to touch the ring um going back to uh Hinduism where it's like a woman a woman can't enter a temple because um, uh, when when she had her period she can't enter a temple that's I, I believe that's similar to uh, women not being allowed to touch the ring because it's like how do you know 
that woman is has her menses, you know. So that's why it's like, oh, just don't touch her at all. And it's um, because a woman's energy is uh, like what when she's on her menses, it's like um, it kind of disrupts the energies in the temple. This is what I heard. Uh, so it disrupts the energies at the temple. So I would say that it's similar to pretty much like um, the ring because it's mm-hmm. a sacred sacred area. So, you know, so it really is, you know, if you think about it, it's like if you're entering the ring, that's like the, the temple for Muay Thai in a way, mm-hmm. right? So um, by a woman not touching the ring, like if she touches it, then her energy would disrupt whatever it is. That's is there on. anything else aside from menstruation that makes women so not sacred? <laughs> Wait, not sacred? Um, yeah. So I mean, like, you know, where there's talks about like this place being sacred and the ring being sacred, and then if a woman touches it, then it kind of makes it not sacred. Like, is there anything else aside from a woman bleeding, uh, uh, having a period that? It, it's not that it's not sacred. I'd say that it just disrupts the energy of that area. So um, because it's it's like her uh, a woman is actually like her energy is actually very very strong, um, especially especially during the the time of her menses, you know. Like so, I mean, if you go back into like see this this. Like if you go back into, you know, those pagan times even, they would say that during during the time of the month, that's when like a woman is actually powerful or, you know, her energy is very strong and can be disruptive. And uh, usually like when she she has her men's use, it's usually on a full moon. So so they say it would uh, disrupt the, the energy is a bit weird then too. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't really say that it doesn't make it not sacred, but I would say that it's just it's a it just changes the energy. And then now, that, like, uh, sorry, go on. So, and then and then now, like you know, that's that's what I I believe in, like, and you know, um, and that's what I heard, and it kind of sounds like it kind of makes sense to me. It's like okay. Um, I tried to find some more information on that and to research it, but it's really hard. There's, mm-hmm. I think because it's, um, there's just, you know, so much history and like, you know, throughout the years, they just pass it, pass down the information. Well, I think I just had a little blackout just then here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, throughout the years, you know, it's just something that um, that just becomes accepted, and then they're like, "Oh, you can't touch it." It's like, why? You just can't. Mm. You know? I, yeah. I I mean, you know, back to what you start what, when you started talking about like women's energy, how it could disrupt it. It it really took me back to like uh, when I was just I started thinking about witches because witches they were always seen as women, and it's like, oh no, you're going to cause this, this, and this, and then they would burn them you know so yeah and it's interesting that you bring out the point of how like what they're they don't want women to touch certain things because of how powerful their energy could be as opposed to how a lot of people view it as like um oh women are beneath which i mean in certain in certain constructs this is still very much the norm but the way that you kind of see it is like, oh, women's energies are actually far more powerful than a man's energy, which is why it can disrupt something so much. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I mean, that's well, that's what I believe in, and I mean, that's how it was told to me as well, and it just made more sense as rather than saying that a woman is like beneath or dirty, you know, it's something that's you know yeah so, uh, so things being like tradition and just being done for the sake of be- getting done and for the sake of like oh this is what i was taught that this is what was taught to me so this is what i'm gonna do like 
where where do you personally draw the line between tradition and what you think is right or wrong? Um, I think it's more like, okay, you know, you try and find out as much history as you can about it. And then like, doesn't make sense. You know, mm -hmm. like if, if it makes sense, then okay. Yeah. If it's logical, it can be logical, but sometimes things are, are, you know, um, are not logical, but then you know, I think it's what resonates as well. Um, like when you learn about some things and um, yeah, sometimes I guess it was like one of my teachers that just the way that he told it to me where, where it was like, that made a lot more sense to me than, you know, it was backed up by a lot of other things as well. But when he told me that it was like, Hey, that's that's really interesting and it just made more sense to me so there's you've got tradition but then sometimes tradition is like if if no one can give you a proper answer and if their answers are like it's as if that like the way that they answer you is more like a flippant sort of answer where they don't really know themselves and then you just you just got to keep on digging for for more uh, answers until you kind of uncover, uncover the truth in a way. Mm -hmm. And then form sense? your own opinion about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, so I, in Thailand, I train at a gym where uh, there are, are a couple of rings that women can't touch and monks have come in to bless the ring. Do you know what process it is that monks do in order to actually bless the ring or bless the gym or bless the home? Like, are they, are those all similar things? Uh, no, I, I actually don't know the process. I haven't really seen it, but I mean, I've been blessed by monk and no, I've, I've seen it actually. I've, I mean, I haven't seen them do bless, do a blessing on the gym, but I have mm -hmm. seen, you know, I've, you know, I've gone to the temple where the monk has blessed me. And then I've, I've gone to some like other temples where it's a different sort of blessing as well. Um, I'd say that they have their own sort of, um, it's something that they learn that they do. And it's just part of, um, you know, the Dharma that they follow. And it's, it's, it's just, I don't really know what the process is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things about buddhism is that it's seen as something that's very peaceful like a lot of people they associate buddhism with a lot of meditating which is something that you participate in and meditation is also like something that's seen as very peaceful uh buddhism is also seen as something like non-violent and they practice things like pacifism uh so going on to say that buddhism preaches non-violence and when you look at muay thai it's something that's violence Right. At least when you look at it from like a fighting standpoint, uh, how do you think this consolidates with each other? Hmm, that's a good question. I think I need to think more about this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. I, I don't know if I can actually answer you today about it. But it is something mm -hmm. that I'd like to think deeply on and and let, and come back to you. Yeah, yeah, that. of course, of yeah, course. Yeah. I can always like add in whatever thoughts that you may come up with, and you know, just take your time with okay. it. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I, I threw that in from like out of nowhere too. Yeah. So, um, uh, are there any other Buddhist aspects that you know are in Muay Thai or you see in Muay Thai that some people who are there temporarily don't really get to notice? Well, I mean, it's uh, like if you're starting in Muay Thai that you, you don't really know that the Y crew or, or the Mong Kong or the Praja are actually like they're, they're linked to Buddhism, you know, even even like, you know, especially like the Y crew and people don't know that they think, oh, it's just it's, it's, it's just a dance or something that you do. But it's actually a uh, link to Buddhism. So um, in Thailand, so 
I think it, those those are the main things, and they don't realize that. Even even the Sakyans, some people are like when they first come to Thailand or when they first start out in Muay Thai, they're like, oh, I just want the, I just want that tattoo that Muay Thai fighters have. And then they'll go to a tattoo shop and then they'll get it done when really, like, you know, uh, it should be done by a monk because it's actually a blessing. And, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's a pro- there's a process around it, right? So, and even the Sakyans, like, you know, there's special words of power or luck and whatnot that these monks and all, um, and the Arjans, like they learn and they study it for years and years and years. Um, to get to go to a tattoo shop and to have someone um, just just get a copy of it, it's like no, it's it's yeah, it, it's and, like it's 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 a little bit like uh, buying like an original from the artist themselves versus just copying and pasting it and then like running it through a printer without. Yeah, Without, it's, it's, yeah, it's a little bit like that. I mean, yeah. different, but a little bit. Same, same, but different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, but you don't even get like the whole aspect of like the, the fortune or, you know, the blessing, blessing on it. It's just something that doesn't make sense. That it's something that's even... aesthetic as, as opposed to like yeah. the luck it brings or whatever yeah. else it brings. Oh, it's basically like, you know, uh, someone who's, you know, there's that joke about like um, people getting ta- a Chinese tattoo and not knowing what it means. It's exactly yeah, yeah. like that. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Um, <laughs> if people wanted to learn more about Buddhism or how it relates to things in Thailand and Muay Thai, uh, do you have any resources or books or anything like that that people can look into and learn more? Um, well, if they want to learn more about Buddhism, there is a great website. Um, let me just Google it. It's, okay. it's actually a very, very good website. So I would highly recommend it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, buddhanet.net. Buddhanet.net. Yeah, that's, that's, there's, there's, um, and you know how I said earlier how I didn't know? I think, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Vada, the two differences in, uh, Buddhism is Sarah Vada, my Mahayana, and Vajrayana Buddhism. So there's, different so is that um, three or two because i said two earlier <laughs> yeah there's there's three oh, okay my mistake um yeah there's different schools ah so theravada buddhism is based in southeast asia in thailand Myanmar, sri lanka uh mahayana is China, Japan, and Korea, and Vajrayana is small around Tibetan, like Tibetan Buddhism. Mm. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, so Buddha, I would recommend Buddha.net, uh, BuddhaNet.net, and this is basically like where I learned a lot of my um, studies, like some of my studies on this there's there's a plethora of information on there even meditation and all that and and i think uh it's got the different schools as well i think there's mention Mm -hmm. of them and the differences yeah do you have any other resources to plug um what else is there i think start off start off with that uh there's also yeah there's a lot of Buddhist books that you can read. I, I believe, um, you know, they simplified it and made it easy for people to understand. So that's also a really good thing. Um, at the top of my head, I just, I'd say Buddha Net 
is the best way to start with. Yeah. Cool. I feel like I learned so much. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. I mean, <laughs> like growing up Buddhist, I feel like these were all things. Well, like, not all, especially like the the Muay Thai in Thailand kind of things. But I feel like a lot of these, like uh, especially the things about like energy and women's energy, I feel like these were things that I should have learned uh, a while ago, since it is part of like my my upbringing. But I don't know, just kind of went over my head, or I didn't have the resources at the time. Well, like with the energy stuff, like I think that's that's not something that a lot of people know about either. I mean, that was taught to mm -hmm. me by by mouth by uh, one of my teachers um, who knows a lot about Buddhism and uh, Hinduism, and you know, like he knows a lot about religion. So that's what he how he told me about it. Um, mm -hmm. So I like. If you were to go and look for some text, I don't know if it can be found, but like, you know, if you search for why a woman can't enter like the temple, you'll find some stuff on that. And then, you know, you just, it just takes you down like a rabbit hole. You just go from one mm -hmm. thing to another. And then, and then you, you think about, oh, okay. Um, you know, Muay Thai, it's like, what, what has that got to do with it? Okay. So all these religions, like have combined to become Buddhism in, in Thailand. And, you know, I think it just kind of links up. You just have to, there's so many different branches and maybe other people may have like their own um, answers on it. And I would love to know if, if, if anyone mm -hmm. else knows or um, can show me any information on this. I would love to know more about it. So that would be really cool because I love learning stuff. Yeah. For, for, for those listening, we have Helen on the show because, uh, you know, she, I, I really truly do think that she has like a good take on a lot of the issues that we discussed or just the matters that we discussed, not necessarily issues, but just keep in mind that, you know, the things that she expresses don't hold all of them to be like the absolute truth. Like she's also on her own journey to learning more about Buddhism and learning more about Buddhism. Uh, in Muay Thai. So don't add us for those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and uh, if Helen, anyone knows more information about it, let me know, like point us in the right direction. I mm -hmm. really would love to know about it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Helen, how can uh, people follow you and uh, look at your project, She Fights? Uh, I really love that project. It just brought so many stories and just uh, things beyond the surface a little, beyond just taking a few words from a fighter about who they are. Like it just, it really captured, like, you know, the word you like to use, energy. It really mm -hmm. captured the energy of the fighters that you shot uh, in both the, the, the photo form and also in the words. Uh, so how can people look at that? And also how can people follow you and get in contact with you? Um, so I am on Instagram. I'm not always like very... Uh, active on there but you can find me on instagram at helentran.co uh, that's where you can see my she fights project hopefully i will eventually wrap that up um that's the plan because i i at the moment i don't feel a need to continue on with it rather than you know i i there i created what i did was i interviewed so many people and took so many photos and i have like thousands of images of, of women, you know, and their stories. And there's still so much more to tell. And then I, I guess I reached a point where it's like, oh, you know, I, you know, there's, you know, it's got to stop somewhere for me anyway, because I don't, um, there's other things. I, I'm not just a Muay Thai photographer, I'm a photographer. And there are other things that I want to explore and other areas that I want to get into in terms of photography. So um, for now, I think uh, wrapping up She Fights, you know, the women that I picked um, participated and, you know, we were able to compile like a story or basically an understanding of the struggles that the women went through. And that's what I said, you know, that's what my project was about. You know, I just wanted to highlight that the disparity really. It was to do that. And I think I achieved that. So. Now it's about me wrapping up the project and then, 
maybe doing something uh, a little bit further about it, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can read the story there. Maybe later on I will do a website or do a link with, you know, so then you can see the photos um, rather than on Instagram that's so small, but you can see it, see it like in a bigger size. It'll be nicer to see, I think. Um, yeah, so it's so. Uh, it's something in progress that's been put on hold, but at, selfishly, yeah. it's something that I really enjoy. So I do hope yeah. that uh, it continues our for longer than yeah. rather than stopping sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my it's my little baby project. I think uh, you mentioning it now, it's like oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it brings back a well, lot of memories. Yeah, yeah, very very good memories at that too. Yeah. Well, Helen, thanks for coming on to talk. Uh, I know that you have plenty of other stuff to do as you're not just here to talk about uh, Buddhism and educating us on it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope um, it was, you know, you, there were things that you could learn from it. And yeah. <laughs>